This is Mark Tobias with Rob Myers at Inmarsat headquarters in London. Uh, Rob is head of uh, commercial development for uh, land business. And we're going to talk today briefly about the global Inmarsat satellite network, what it can do, and uh, how it differs from the other three major networks in the world. So Rob, thanks a lot for uh, agreeing to do this. Uh, um, Inmarsat's been in operation since for about 30 years. That's right. The company was founded in 1979 as an intergovernmental organization. And Inmarsat originally stood for uh, International Maritime Satellite Network? Exactly. Okay, exactly. and then you changed that yeah. to just Inmarsat. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so describe your network and you've, you've just come out with a new handheld. That's right. We launched um, iSat Phone Pro in some summer 2010 uh, as our first uh, global handheld satellite phone. Uh, it operates across Inmarsat's i4 network, which is our latest generation of, of geostationary satellites. That, that means that these satellites are in orbit uh, about 36,000 kilometers above the equator. Right, 23,000 miles. Exactly. So they, they sit stationary so they, as the world turns, they turn. They appear fixed. For right, the that's correct. So you need three of those to cover the Earth's surface. Okay. Uh, our phone operates across that network, um, provides literally the ability to, to make a phone call pretty much uh, most places on the planet. Okay, and there's a vast difference between your network and the, what I'll call the other three networks, which is uh, Iridium, Thorea, and Global Star. That's right, there are some differences. Um, what, one of the fundamental differences, for example, between us and Iridium is that Iridium's satellite fleet is what's called a a LEO fleet, so a right, lower low, right. So you need more satellites orbiting at a lower lower height above the Earth. To right, provide. and 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 Iridium, because uh, I was involved with them pretty deeply uh, when they launched, uh, they're running about 487 miles yeah, exactly. above the Earth, exactly. and there originally was 66 of them, hence the the name Iridium yeah. because of the periodic table, and uh, I don't know if they're still running 66 satellites. Um, but th what they do is crisscross the earth. Exactly. So if you're making a call on, on our network, essentially you get a connection to the satellite. And you stay with it. You stay with that. Um, right. And, and we feel, you know, the, the, uh, with a call with ISOF and Pro, you, you, very, you get a, a similar, we like to think of it in lay terms as a similar quality to a GSM call. Uh, very reliable connection, um, pretty, good, pretty good call quality from that, from that you know, fixed right. Satellite. So you're not handing off between satellites. That's the fundamental difference. Yeah. So those there's about a 20 minute window, I think, between uh, Iridium satellites passing overhead. So if that. Yeah. Um, I've used Iridium all over the world a lot, and sometimes it, you cannot distinguish it from a GSM call or CDMA call, and sometimes you really can. Exactly. That there are serious intelligibility issues. It's a great network. Uh, and all of our troops are using it in Iraq and Afghanistan. Yeah. But it's it does have limitations. Now, just a matter of technical question, do you alter the power on your handsets or once you fix a connection between the handset and a satellite, does the power remain constant regardless of where you're at because Iridium adjusts theirs, which also drastically affects battery life? Yeah, well, our phone, once you've got a, once you've got a connection with ISAP Phone Pro, Pretty much the perceived wisdom is, you know, you, you'll, you'll maintain that connection for the duration of your call. Right. You'll get a you know, very, very uh, intelligible, good quality voice voice connection and be able to complete the call no matter how long that call takes. Right. And what about weather? How susceptible are you to heavy cloud cover, rain cover, uh, snow, everything that affects uh, ultra high frequency transmission? Again, without wishing to get too technical, our satellites right. are L-band, meaning meaning they're very, very uh, unsusceptible, if that's the right word, to to climatic and weather conditions. So, again, we're, we're, our services are pretty unaffected by by rain, moisture, uh, and snow. Um, and Thorea, they're just basically uh, uh, Mid East and Africa. Yeah, Thorea are a regional operator, right. whereas. Uh, uh, ourselves and Iridium are, are, are a global global operator. Their handsets are very small. They are really like cellular. Yeah. Are they popular in the region? They are. Um, that they're synonymous with with a satellite phone in in, in the Middle East. Um, but thankfully, you know, since the launch of iSat Phone Pro last summer, we've 
we've been able to offer a really a genuinely credible alternative right. to them and had, had some success in that region right. as well. Um, okay, and Global Star. Global Star is actually a different technology. It's, as I recall, low Earth orbit technology, but all the satellites you have to go up bent pipe technology, as they call it. Mm -hmm. So in order to communicate, there's a lot of ground stations, yeah. and which becomes very costly for roaming when you're talking satellite phone to satellite phone. Yeah. Um, do you know where they're at? As far as their network, at one point, it's a CDMA-based network, which means it's just like cellular. At one point, they were terrific service, and then they started losing satellites, and now I understand that they have launched new, some new satellites, but they may be having problems. So do you get, do you get any spillover from customers? We, we do, and um, I, I can only echo your comments. You know, the, the perceived wisdom is that they're, they're, they're doing, you know, they're, they're looking at launching a new constellation, but... Regrettably for them, it seems right. as if they are having some technical yeah, well, issues if they, around that. Yeah, well, if they have problems with their new satellites, that's going to be a major economic issue. It's not good for them, given that they're trying to, uh, you know, relaunch, and um, I think it's the, it's the last thing they would have wanted the, is to have technical issues. The, they hooked up with the French, is that correct? Yeah. Um, so coverage issues. Um, in Marsat, when I look at your maps, it doesn't. There's overlap, but there are some gaps. Yeah. Where? Essentially the, the poles. So uh, So unless you're visiting the South Pole or North Pole for vacation, yeah. uh, you've got coverage worldwide. Absolutely. So the polar regions, uh, as you quite rightly say, are, are not, not covered. Um, but, you know, as you say, given that, that you know, there's, they're very sparsely have it. Have yeah, right. I mean, because I always try to take my ski vacations at the North or South Pole, yeah. <laughs> as do everybody. Yeah. And so it's really not an issue. We, we don't feel, I mean, as, as you touched on right at the beginning of this conversation, you know, we've got a 30 year pedigree of offering right. absolutely rock solid sort of global satellite communications, and, and we're operating the latest generation of our network to provide that global satellite phone service. And it doesn't cover the polar regions, but, but you know, we feel that it just generally provides a, a very, very good quality service you know, for most of the world's population. Who's the majority of your users? Is it maritime? Is it government? What's, what's, what makes up the bulk of your base? Well, we serve, we, we feel that we, we serve a number of vertical markets, you know, so media organizations, oil and gas organizations, aid, first responders, as you say, government, both, both military and civil. And actually, ISAF and Pro is, is really, we've had some success in, in, in a number of those sectors, you know, mm -hmm. um, for really for any, any remote workers, whatever sector they're in, needing to be able to, to make, a, make a call from wherever they are. And just, it's occurring to me, from the security standpoint, um, just like Iridium, it's pretty tough to intercept traffic. Absolutely. Unless you're very, very close to the handset. Well, m more than just operate that, that global um, geostationary fleet of satellites that we've described, we, we've, we've, we've invested a lot of money in, in building that, 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 that you know, global telephone capability into the network. And, the best way to think of this is that we provide inherent security in that network to, to, a, to the same level as like a, a 3G network or U, UMT right. standard. So there's inherent security in that, in that voice conversation. And you have data built into that network also. Do you know the speeds? I know you're not a tech, but yeah. do you know the download speeds? Is it uh, 2400 baud, 9600 baud? We, we do, you're right, the same, the same network is used for our global uh, broad, broadband network where there, there is speeds that are available up to about half a meg. Right. Um, send and receive. So. And what about SMS or email on your handsets? Back to the phone itself. Um, on the data side, we, we do offer a, a very low low data low speed data connection on the phone itself for an absolute emergency. Uh, right. It's a two point four kilobit per second. Right. So it's like channel, a radio. It's like a radio channel. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're literally in the middle of nowhere. Right. You need to send an email and you have your laptop. You can do that with with our phone itself. Right. In addition to our data data product. And I noticed your phone went to a micro USB connector, which is becoming it's really smart. Yeah. It's becoming the standard. Of the new uh, well, the ninety five fifty five Iridium handset is not. It's a coaxial connector, which I really don't care for for reliability. I haven't seen the ninety five seventy five yet. That just came out. Yeah. But micro USB, other than for Apple, is pretty much the world standard. We think so. Well, no, it is. Yeah. It is yeah. Not only that you think so, everybody, all the phones are yeah. adopting it because it's an easy connector. Yeah. 
and so you you have data access into that same port. Exactly, it's it's that micro USB port that you refer to through which you would connect that phone to your laptop. To, right. And you run some uh, optim software software that's optimized to compress the data over that relatively low speed um, circuit switch data. Right. And you, you have a software package for both PCs and Macs. Yep. Yep. There are a number of software packages available. There's a generic application available to anybody, and then a number of our distribution partners, our channel partners, have their own software applications as well. So my mom has been on a cruise ship for a month mm -hmm. and uh, has been using one of your new ISAT Pro handsets Great. and is now addicted to it. Um, she's carrying on half hour phone conversations. I'm sure you'll be happy about that. Um, That's good. But she's, it's, it's transparent to her yeah. and she's really not technical at all. Yeah. She just I showed her how to use the handset the day she left uh, she's been out to sea for a month, and um, she's having no problem with it. The only thing she noticed at first was there's a ne there's a connection delay. Yeah. It's uh, about 45 seconds yeah. where you don't provide call prompt tones, so you really don't know what's happening. Yeah. Um, but other than that, once she figured it out, she's having no trouble dialing anything, okay. and it's just chatting away. That's great to hear. Yeah, the only difference is her chatting away isn't costing five dollars a minute like everybody else yeah. with cellular. Yeah. And and they don't realize that till they get home. Mm -hmm. Rob, how do we contact customer service or is there a twenty four hour customer service or dispatch center or operations center link? Like for example with Iridium. Absolutely. You can dial six one one or six one 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 and contact the Netherlands yeah. for their twenty four hour center. Do you have that similar capability if they have trouble? Yes, we do. Um, we have to remember that Mossat is, is, a, is a wholesale uh, business. Right. Um, and so any ISAP Phone Pro customer will have, will have purchased that phone through one of our channel partners okay. who will provide their own support. Oh, I see. So it just routes to them. Yeah. But however, obviously Mossat does have its own 24 by 7 by 365 um, right. support service. And, okay, so we're, we've talked about outbound calls from the handset to the switch telephone network. How about contacting your handset? Do you, because it's very expensive, if you just sit at home and dial mm. an Inmarsat number, like $10 a minute, how do you get around that? Do you have an end-to-end -end system where you can dial into a gateway and then over dial the, the handset phone number and talk to it at a, at a lot less rate? Uh, we, we don't, know. Um, I mean, we, we, we literally interface you know, to the PSTN globally through a number right. of telecom Right. You do, but all the carriers, the landline carriers, charge a fortune to get to you. Mm. And so I suppose, I mean, what I've recommended is send an SMS or an email to the phone mm -hmm. saying, call me. Yeah. yeah. And how, how does the phone work with the antenna not extended, will it, if you're out in the open space, will it work or not? Or is it blocked from working uh, it, by a switch in the phone? Exactly. It, it won't work. It won't it, work. So it, it tells you to extend the antenna. You have to extend the antenna to get service and get connection. Um, okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the what everybody's going to want to know. Number one, what does your handset cost? Well, once again, I'm, I must just say that uh, <laughs> we, we're a wholesale company and we, we don't um, sell directly to end customers, right. but, but basically, a typical, yeah, a typical a typical retail price of the phone would be um, seven, seven, right. six or seven hundred dollars, something like that. Right, which is essentially nothing. Uh, the, the, well, the, the smartphones are selling for that. It's the yeah. same thing. Yeah, we we think it's very very competitive, especially when you compare it to some of those competitive offerings that you you've talked about. Yeah, and when I met with your uh, director in the United States. Uh, he said that you now have an extremely competitive pricing plan for consumers that they can get down to like 90 cents a minute per call. Yep, exactly. That's a good deal. Yeah. Because the normal, as you're well aware, the normal rate uh, uh, on Verizon is a buck 30 a minute from Europe, uh, 99 cents a minute from T-Mobile, which is pretty consistent between that price range. So satellite communications becomes an equal service understanding the limitations of satellite. I think you're absolutely right. There's two dimensions to this. When you compare those rates, those call rates compared to sat at home or in your office right. making a call, clearly you're paying a premium for the ability to make that conversation right. anywhere you are in the world. However, when you compare it to the uh, rather 
inflated roaming rates that you just touched on from some of the cellular operators, then it starts to become a different proposition. You know, if you're in the middle of the ocean or in the middle of a desert or in a remote location. Yeah, then there's no pay phones and there's no cellular yeah, and, you know, GSM is only where people, exactly. people are. And so, and what about handset to handset calls. How do you handle that? Do both parties pay or is it only call initiating party? No, just, just the initiating. So yeah. just like GSM, yeah. it's the same model. Exactly. And you don't have any dual dual mode phone that roams on GSM networks and your satellite network, I assume. We don't. We don't. We, we, we consider that. But, right. Um, and we tested that. Because some carriers have done that. Yeah, with with limited success, I would I would argue, and um, the the jury's out on that one. You know, you you'll get pockets of um, users that will say that's a good idea, and and you'll get get other users saying that that's not such a good proposition for them. Actually, Iridium did that in their original handset, and it actually it really wasn't a good idea. Yeah. It it caught there was a lot of roaming issues with the phone numbers. Yeah. And so, well, we're going to go take a tour, a uh, brief tour of your operation center to see um, how you control this vast network. How many satellites globally do you have? Well, we have 11 um, satellites in orbit currently, of which the latest generation that I mentioned earlier, the I-4s, yeah. of which there are three of those. All right. Very good. Well, listen, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for visiting today, and now we'll go look at your operation center. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. You bet.